buffering now. And then we'll go right to the live. Hey, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are having so much fun just seeing what God does in Create Talks around the planet and interviewing incredible creatives. And I have an incredible woman. She is one of my dear friends and an artist at Bethel. And she has done so much in really going after her heart for social justice and just seeing things thrive and grow. And I am just so excited to welcome Amani Hansen. Give it up for Amani. Hi. <laughs> hey, it's so good to see you. Uh, a lot of people might not know that it's been on my heart and also your heart to teach people how to really create with God through art and also dance, music, writing. And so I talked to Amani about this incredible privilege of what we have, of what we've seen at Bethel and in other places around the world where I've gone, where people can get activated to create with God. And then they're on this journey of really touching the community, going after social justice, other stuff like that but they need to find their creative tribe and there needs to be things out there that are free. So starting in March, we will be with you uh, in March, probably the first week of that Tuesday of every month. And we're going to be teaching and focusing and helping you grow in art, not only in skills, but in how do you practice with the presence of God? You're going to be able to answer questions. So just like this Facebook live that we're doing right now, it will be Tuesdays from 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It will be fully recorded. So if you can't come because of a time zone issue, you can still see it. So um, Amani, share with your heart, why is that important for us to do? And, and what do you want to see happen through this? Um, I think it's important because so many people, I think, become intimidated by creativity or think that it's not for them or that you need some high level of skill to even get started. So I just love being able to activate people in it and just show them like, it's in all of us. God is the creator and he made all of us. So we're all creative. And a lot of times we just need permission to try it out, to be messy, you know, to just go for it. And um, sometimes that takes somebody else just encouraging us. So I love to be able to do that for people. Yeah. And I'm going to have Beth put that in the chat. So six to seven live Facebook. March the 8th, we're going to start. So art will be on the 8th. And then the following week will be music. The next week will be writing. And then the next will be dance. So we're going to focus upon one of these creative expressions. And we're really going to help you grow. And from that, we have focus groups in Create Academy as well that you will tell you more about. But but let's talk about your journey in, in creativity and like when did this all start for you? When did you first realize like, oh my gosh, I feel like art is my medium. And I feel like art is the thing, like if I could do anything. Um, and then you went into your career. So talk about why, what, what is the why behind this? So we want to know. <laughs> so, well, I started drawing in high school and realized I loved that. Um, and then years later, I did a prophetic worship painting activation and discovered paint and just fell in love with that. I felt like, oh, this is what I've been missing this whole time. There's freedom of expression. Um, and so that was kind of when I was like, oh, I there's something here that I really want to pursue. And then um, in 2010, I did the School of Illustration with YWAM, a three-month art intensive. So that was amazing. It was something I had wanted to do for years. And so finally, like the timing just all worked together and took a step of faith to do that. And doing that was actually when I really realized, like, um, I guess, like, I always knew I wanted to, but 
it didn't really feel possible and I didn't really understand the value of art. So that's what held me back from it was like, well, maybe it's just not really worth it. But doing the skill of school of illustration made me realize like, oh, there is so much value in it. We have an opportunity to have a voice in the world and to communicate things that words can't communicate. So um, it was right after the school I did my first justice piece and I felt like this is what I'm made for. Wow, I, I have to like, um, I have to just kind of camp on that right now. A lot of you out there um, that are listening might have heard these thoughts or maybe it was your family or counselors in your educational program that said, oh, art's not that important. But when God calls you and he gives you a, a desire to do it, it's for a specific reason, like what Amani just talked about, which we're going to get into. And so I just want to clarify, you have permission to create in the way that God's created you to be and not to apologize and not to act like God's not going to provide for you because he is, he's providing for Amani through her creativity in stores and on Etsy all over. And she, she had to make that leap of faith that, wow, God, if you gave me this like heart, you want to then help me to find out why. And, and that's what happened. So yay, Jesus. So yeah. if you're listening and if you have people that you go, oh my gosh, they need to hear this too. Please share this. And if you have any questions for Imani, this is a live Facebook. We would love, love, love to hear any questions that you have for Imani. Um, the, my next question though is how does your, your heart for social justice merge with your choice of going after creating and portraiture in other ways? And how does it also bring about an awareness to the needs of those who really can't really can't like cry out for themselves. So I, I want to hear, where did that come from? Yeah. Well, I was actually first inspired by a call for art by an organization called Invisible Children. And they were going after Joseph Kony, the leader of the child soldiers in Africa. And so they said, we need awareness and we need artists to rise up and create art that will like, put a stop to this. So I was like, oh, wow, yes. Come on. So I just sat down, I prayed over my canvas and I just painted, I painted for eight hours straight and I created a piece. I had a portrait part of it that I spent some more time on, but that was that piece that I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I'm made for. And so um, I don't take any of my pieces lightly in the sense that I take a lot of time, sometimes years actually, like meditating and praying, just kind of brooding on the idea that I want to communicate. So I did another justice piece for my um, aunt and uncle that work in Uganda. They have a tree planting initiative that helps provide food, keeps people out of human trafficking, you know, prevents deforestation, all kinds of amazing results from that. So I did a piece for that. And um, so through the years, I've just had like key ones that God puts on my heart and just really take my time until I get the imagery in my mind to create whatever it is that he shows me to do. So I love it. Share, share about the one that's in back of you. Cause that is just yeah. for sale. Yeah. So this is not for sale. And that was a similar one. It had been on my heart since I was in YWAM to create a piece about human trafficking and specifically sex trafficking. But I was really like, how do you create a piece without it being this dark, terrible thing? And that's not the kind of art I want to put out there. I want it to be about hope. And that's the big struggle with social justice is a lot of it does look so hopeless. So I actually prayed about this one for years and was just like, I don't know what to do. And then um, I was inspired to enter a contest. I was living in Las Vegas and it was a billboard contest and I had this size canvas. So I was like, okay, that'll be perfect. Um, and just after all these years, this image just came into my mind and it was the same kind of thing as before. I just sat down, I started painting, I painted for days and um, this is what emerged. And I was able to partner with an organization called Operation Underground Railroad 
and they turned it into a book to raise awareness and raise funds for their organization. They do like a huge amount of work. So it was amazing to see how God just took my little seed and just blew it up. It was like, Ooh. yeah, so incredible. Yeah, I love it, Amani. And I, I love um, for those of you that are, are, are hearing Amani's story. I mean, think about it. Like there's something that a, a painting can evoke that can um, take, take this thing called not for sale and make it relevant. But like what you said, Imani, not in a dark way, but in a true reality, like um, this girl has a future. She has a future of where she's headed, what she wants to do. And when you are involved in the sex slave trade, all of that is obliterated and you're forced into the worst kind of atrocities. And this is something that we can create awareness with. And what I love too about your story, Imani, is that unless you would have created and you would have been faithful, it wouldn't have been ready to be, to be put in the right hand. So guys, yeah. create now in what you feel called to, and God is going to give you more. Um, I think we might have a question here. Hold on. Uh, what do you do with your social justice pieces after you create them? Do you use them to fundraise for whatever cause you want or, or, or um, do you do other things with them? So that's the question. What Thank you for asking that question, guys. So tell me what you do with your pieces. So each one so far has been dedicated to a specific organization. So this one, um, they have the rights to it, I guess, in a sense of like they created the book to raise awareness. And so it's yet to be decided what will happen with the original. So <laughs> I have it now. And then um, the piece that I did for Uganda um, I have the original still that would eventually like to have it over there in Africa at their headquarters, but I sell prints of it and the profits from the prints go towards their organization. Which I love. And so that's a part of your, your heart too, is like from the proceeds to some of these different things that you do, the prints will continue to create revenue for, for whatever organization you want to support. So if you are creative in music or art, this is such a viable way that we can not only make a difference, but support the people that are really doing the stuff that um, if we can't go there, your, your funds can go there. The image can go there, which I absolutely love. Good question out there, guys. Continue. Let's get more questions out there. Um, I have another thing that people might not know is that you were involved with me on my art apprenticeship. And so we would meet weekly when I was overseeing uh, the creative arts at Bethel and we would like just do life together and we would prophesy through our art. We would have skills that we would learn and we had table pastors, which Amani was a part of. And we just saw so many people from every walk of life come and grow creatively through art. And it was such a great time just seeing the level of what community can do. Uh, but we also did projects for the community and Amani, you were a part of that. And I just want you to share about like the power of what happened because we were a creative army of artists and just some of the highlights that happened that you were a part of. Yeah, I think you can't underestimate the power of community. And as artists, I think we can really get stuck in our head with self-criticism, yes. self-doubt, like who am I to share anything? So when you have a safe place, like the apprenticeship, it was always encouraged, bring in your art. What are you working on this week? And so I just bring my stuff and to be able to um, just hear encouragement from other people and be able to offer encouragement to the other artists was amazing and really life-giving. I was also new to the area, so I was able to build some really close friendships. One of my closest friends was from the apprenticeship. Um, and then we got to do these community events that were amazing, like the Faces of Reading was one of them that was really impactful. Yeah, it really was. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing how we, it's like what you talked about, Amani. I mean, there is that there is that time which I loved it where you had your heart to go after social justice and what God did in opening up the avenues for you to give. But then there's a larger 
community within like where we live that might be touched. And so you guys can study like uh, Brian Peterson Faces of Santa Ana. He's the one who really inspired me to do what we did for Faces of Reading. But every year for five years, we would highlight a different group. And then we would do their bios, their photos. And then from the photos, the artist would do a portrait. And then we would have an event that we did once a year where people would come and honor that, that, that group of people, whether it's teachers or whether it's unsung heroes. We did it for the car fire people, things like that. Then they were able to celebrate as a whole community on the heroes that are right there in their own hometown. And so I, I love that because we, we saw so many people get touched and family members uh, that were so touched by what we did through doing a wonderful piece for their loved one. It, it was like, it just smacked of Jesus. So I could do, and this wasn't a Christian event. This was a kingdom event. Uh, and we did sing things like that throughout the year that just brought our community of artists together but really touch the community of Reading. And so, yeah, it, it I, I can remember your portraits and what you did and the people that got touched, Imani. It was such an incredible time. So imagine 30 of these portraits done with the different artists and the power of what can happen in those people's lives. We do have another question for you too, Imani. It's um, right here. Did you become known as an artist first before getting involved in social um, justice issues? Uh, or, um, and do you, get, uh, and are, do you do commissioning for pieces as well? I do commissions, yes. <laughs> um, no, I wouldn't say I was known as an artist. I mean, like in my circle, but um, I didn't have an, I don't even know if I had an Instagram when I started. <laughs> Come on. Uh, so it gives yeah, you guys nice hope out there. Come on. I, yeah. I mean, it's again, it's just like God can use wherever you're at. So I was just yeah. like, this is what I have. This is what I'm passionate about. This is what I want to do with my life. And so um I just little by little, you know, I would do a portrait and then just see or not well, I think all my justice pieces have than portraits, but um, yeah, do a painting and then just see what doors God would open up with it. And um, yeah, so I don't, you don't need a platform. God's your platform and he'll Yay! just take your art That's where it right. needs to go. <laughs> I love it. If, if they want to see more of your work on Instagram or, or have you um, do a piece for them, how would they get in contact with you? My website, amanihanson.com or amanihanson.art on Instagram. So I'm um, Amani Hanson, A-M-A-N-I-H-A-N-S-O-N. So look that up and Beth put that in there too, so that we can follow that. And then Lori has a question for you too. Thank you, Lori, for joining us. Uh, how do you activate someone in their creative process? Ooh, that's a good question, Lori. I think one of the best ways is just to sit down and paint. I mean, if you're together, it's really fun. But I love to just create a space where people feel safe and, um, you know, put some worship music on, provide supplies and give some leading questions to just like, you know, have people think about what's on their heart and just moving paint around a canvas is actually like way more liberating than you might imagine whether it, you know, turns into a masterpiece or not. It's the first step in just opening the doors to give yourself freedom and permission to just start. So I love that. I, I love that. I, I am, I'm thinking about March the 8th and what we're doing in yeah, and then Laura, you talked about that process. I mean, a lot of times what when I've looked on YouTube, I know that Amani does as well, or Pinterest, like you'll see a demo, but you'll never, but then you have questions. So what medium did you use or how did you do this technique? Could you show me again? And, and so you don't have that, that live interaction. And so that's why we really created this time, this uh, forum group for you to really see uh, how Amani would do something for 10 minutes, do a demo, and then you have Q&A, you could try it out yourself as well and have your own 
supplies, but then you get to then ask her questions. So tell me, how did you, how did you create the eye? How did you create the look over here? How did you get the wash? All of those things you're able to ask. And it just makes it more, I would say close to home. You, you get more personalized in, in the, in what you want to really learn. But what is your heart for that time? What do you want to see happen, Amani, when we're, when, when we're together on Tuesdays? Um, I really just want to see kind of, I guess, like what I said, people to experience freedom and to let go of the expectation on themselves of being perfect and to find the play and the fun, you know, the way that I did when I started, I still have to remind myself sometimes to have fun because you can get really serious. You're like, oh, trying yeah. to, you're like trying to create this, you know, masterpiece. And the most important thing is just to let go and to let Holy Spirit work with you in it. I mean, even at this last, I painted at the prophetic conference last week and I was in the middle of it. I was like, oh no, I'm not going to make it. It's going to be terrible. And the Holy Spirit was just like, it's okay, relax. Let's do it together. And I just took a deep breath and it was perfect. Like the timing was perfect and it communicated what needed to be said. So that's just my heart is to help um, people on that journey, I guess, of learning to hear from Holy Spirit as you create. Yeah, I think that's so good. I think that um, I, I just want to speak into this whole situation, Lori and others that are listening right now. Um, sometimes we can um, we we can live in a place because of COVID where or where we don't have art on stage, like what's happening at Bethel, and we're planning our church March the eighth, so we'll have live art as well. But but in that process, you might be in a place where you're going, oh my gosh, but I don't have that opportunity. But yes, you do. Uh, you can turn on worship music. You can, uh, you can create with an audience of one, and then you can post on social media. This is what God spoke to me, and this is the process. So it's kind of like what Amon is talking about. It's like we we have to give ourselves challenges, things where we need God, where it's above our pay grade. You know what I mean? It's, it's above our ability because we need God to show up and create with us. And when we give ourselves that time to, to do that checklist. Oh, this isn't about me performing. This is about the Holy spirit coming. And we, we have freedom when we create, then when we create, we're feeling his pleasure and that gets inside of the art. So art that's done in the presence of God, it, it has an eternal, like, um, lasting imprint onto people's lives. It's not just meant to be, Oh, well, that's not, that's a nice painting, et cetera, but it's meant to really continue to uh to open up a person's heart and, and a person's um, understanding of who god is and so that's the beauty of what can happen in your life and so yeah we want to encourage you to be there come it's like again this is something that we so want to do is to invest our heart into yours and have people on every single once a month tuesday at the beginning of the month and just go after what is creativity? How can we grow creatively and to help you grow in any questions that you might have? So yeah, check it out. Live Facebook, um, March the 8th. Um, but do you have any testimonies? I mean, Amani, you have so many testimonies about what God did through your art that people need to know about. And if you have any more questions, let me know too. So the, tell me some testimonies. What, what has God done? where you go, oh, I couldn't believe that this happened. Um, <clears throat> let me see. I got to narrow it down. I think that, I mean, really the, uh, the opportunity to work with the Operation Underground Railroad was a huge testimony of what he can do, like way beyond my skill. And they were able to make the books and, um, raise almost $140,000 towards their cause. So that was an incredible blessing. And then um, just this last the painting that I did at the conference, um, I was telling the lady that purchased it that 
Uh, I felt like it was meant to release a greater level of um, being able to see in the spirit realm. And she's like, grabbed her friend. She's like, you got to say that again. I'm like, what did I just say? So I said it again. And she's like, "That those are the exact words that I have been praying for. And so she just knew like this painting. Because before she didn't know why God told her to buy the painting. She just knew it was for her. And so when I just communicated what my heart was in releasing, um, being able to see more into the spirit and let God talk to you. Um, and, you know, speak out what he's saying. She was just like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I've been praying for. And so she knew like, that's why God had asked her to buy that painting or told her to. So yeah, it was really cool. I love that. It's, it's like the big surprise moment, isn't it? It's like this thing of like surprise. I mean, and And when you post things on social media, guys, too, people that aren't even Christians are going to love your art and that's going to speak to them as well. I I was painting at the pier. It was about, I think a month ago, we were doing an outreach in Huntington Beach. And so uh, Amani, I painted this woman and I didn't have a lot of time because I was at someone's house before we move, move into our house. We're staying at someone's house. So I had an hour and so I'm going, okay, Holy spirit show up. I <laughs> mean, you know, who's going to be down there. And so I painted a, a woman in um, just her, her face with different kind of bright colors and uh, a vibrancy in her eyes. And this woman came up and she, she wasn't a Christian. She goes, I have got to have that painting. That's about me. And And what I believe I'm called to, to be resilient, to go after things, to have hope. And I was able to pray and Uh prophesy over her and she, she bought the painting, but it was marked for her. And and so the Lord sets us up, doesn't he, Imani? He sets us up with like these wonderful Holy Spirit adventures about why these paintings speak to people. And so I've seen it both in the secular and in the Christian realm, it's like people are looking for their identity. They're looking for a word and, uh, and the art can actually come into their heart and completely change them and change who they are. And it can be the difference between what the Holy Spirit's saying and just living on their own. And so it's just, it's just wild. It's crazy. I love it. I had a really cool testimony recently from a different conference where I had painted um, like Jesus walking out onto the water is like low tide kind of thing. But um, this couple purchased it and they loved it and they lived by the ocean. And so, you know, they were and they felt like they were stepping out into a new season of going into the unknown with God, which is what I felt like it was about. And then. So I said, I'll meet you here tomorrow and I'll pass it off to you so you can take it home. And the next day they showed up and she's like, I've like, God reminded me of this dream that I had and this time that I spent with him where it was exactly that she was afraid of the water and God had called her out into the water with him. And she had walked with him on the water and she had totally forgot about it until the painting and she was re- reminded of this whole encounter with him so she's like I I <laughs> loved it before but I love it even more now <laughs> it's so, so funny isn't it like the the little the little threads of how people speak about why that painting ministered to them about what was happening and and sometimes as artists we never know the end story we just get a little glimpse but when they go home oh my gosh it's just like crazy the the testimony is about how god ministered to people through creativity so keep it coming even if you're not in a church that celebrates the art on uh, a on a sunday morning with worship you can do it on um on your own and then you can post it and then share so i love it bethel is such a great place it started so many different people on their journey but it's not the only place where you can see creativity flourish and grow. So, um, so start creating with God in worship and then see where he brings that. We do have, um, oh good. Okay. We are going to prophesy. We're going to prophesy now over the people that are on and I have your names. So Mel K it's K E. Thanks for joining. Uh, 
Amani, do you have a word for her? Is it a him or her? If it's, we'll, we'll just do it generically. I'm not sure if, if you are a uh, male or female, but it doesn't matter. Let's prophesy. All right. Hey, Mel, um, I just feel like God is taking you on a season of risk taking and that places where you felt really intimidated before that God is just um, kind of reaching out his hand and like, come on this with me. Um, just like I was saying about that painting of Jesus walking on the water, I feel like he's calling in, you into a season of that, of like stepping off the boat into the water and just being with him in that, in that process. Oh yeah. I love that. Um, Mel, I have a word too. I saw a, uh, I saw this, I saw a time in your life when you had really uh, gone after creating and then it got stifled or it just got, st it, it stopped. And I feel like I saw the Lord, like a, a bottle of wine and corking you and going, it's time to explode. And I saw these colors and these different expressions of creativity, just kind of just, just coming out of you and just getting on everything, which is what God wants. So let us know what that means, Mel. And then we have um, Steve Dow. Steve, so glad you're with us today. Um, do you have a word for Steve? Um, hi, Steve. I just saw a picture actually of a black-eyed Susan. Um, and I feel like what it speaks to is um, like a spring season. Ooh. And that God just has a new um, time for you of I feel like it's refreshing. Like I kind of can smell that fresh spring air, see the vibrancy of the flowers. And I don't know if the black eyed Susan specifically has like a meaning for you, but that was just the picture that popped into my head. Let us know, Steve, what that means. And if that means something to somebody else that's listening, let us know too. And Steve, I did see uh, on my, on my trees of I, I did this picture of a uh, feather and it's blue and it's brown and it's joined together. And I feel like you have um, a way of writing and a way of creating that is beautiful and it's vulnerability like the brown, but it's got heaven also involved in it with the blue. And you've been wanting to write down. I saw these stories that God had given you and you go, but I don't know if I really can. And I feel like the Lord said, no, it's time. It's like, he's handing you that quill. He's handing you that feather for you to write. So let us know what that means, Steve, both the blue, a uh, black eyed Susan and the quill. Um, let's see. We have Janina, Janina. Welcome. Love to just prophesy over you and Janina, tell us where you're from too. So Janina, what do you think? What is the Lord saying to you, um, Amani, about Janina? I just automatically saw a, um, like you diving into the deep end of a pool. And come on. Um, I, you know, I can come up with my own ideas of what that means, but uh, I feel like that's something personal for you, but that God is just, he's taking you to the depths with him and that maybe what seems scary is actually a safe place for you. Like there's, you know, there's nothing in a pool that's like <laughs> going to come get you or anything like um, that. God has actually created a safe place for you to go into the depths with him. And he just wants you to know that he's ready for you to just to dive in and to experience more intimacy with him. Yeah, it, uh, when you were talking, uh, I got this picture, Amani, for you, Jan Janina, about uh, when you're underwater, um, everything is muffled and you can't really hear uh, what's really going on up in the atmosphere. And in the same way, God wants you to go down deep so that you're, you're hearing only his voice leading you and the other voices become uh, less, less important. And I feel like there's something about that diving in and being with him that is gonna help focus you on what's really important underneath the surface. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's also been some inner healing that God's doing in your life too. So let us know what that means. And we have Simona, Simona Mann. Welcome Simona. 
So um, do you have a word for Simona? Yeah, I feel like it's about um, actually the painting. I don't know if I can show you, but the painting that I just did, it's called Awaken. And <laughs> there it is. Um, to me, this painting represents being able to see with the eyes of heaven and to speak the words of heaven. And so I feel like God is taking you specifically on a journey of like the renewed mind and the declarations that you're going to see significant change in your life as you partner with heaven to see what God is saying for you and to speak that out into the spiritual realm. And I just released over you a new way of seeing that you haven't been able to see before and a new way of hearing his voice that you haven't been experiencing before that if there's places where you feel like it's kind of been stopped up I just um release clear sight and um clear ears to be able to hear the way that God speaks to you not a right way like there's not one certain way but God will show you his voice in your own in your own unique expression wow Simona I, I feel the same way as Amani. I saw the feathers that also represented protection. And I feel like there's been in a season where you felt unprotected. And I feel like it's also about um, you feeling the protection. Sometimes if you are a seer, which I think that you are, a lot of times you can see so much that you feel like overwhelmed. And I saw the Lord saying, no, his feathers are going to protect you. They're going to keep you safe so if you've been in a vulnerable place whatever the lord is also wanting to give that to you as well so let us know what that means great word amani um let me continue let's go after rachel rachel you thank you for joining us do you have a word for rachel uh rachel i see you on a swing <laughs> like one that is um hanging off a tree a really like giant oak tree um and i feel like a couple things one is like there's a child likeness and a freedom about swings like as adults i don't know maybe other people do but i don't take very much time sitting on a swing but um, when you do, there's like such a freedom and it like lifts your spirit. There's actually something mentally like that swings are very, very healthy for you. Um, but I also felt like there was, um, it was about the momentum too, that like you start small and then it grows and it grows and it grows. And so I feel like God's taking you into this momentum that maybe you feel like it's been really stagnant, but just as a swing, like slowly starts in the breeze. Um, I just feel like that momentum is going to keep bringing, like it's going to keep coming and you're going to just like find yourself in a place that you weren't before in a really short amount of time. Woo. Amani, that is beautiful. I love that one. Um, and, and for all of you we didn't get to, um, I want you to look at that, show that painting one more time of the feather. And we just release upon you through Amani's artwork, we just release upon you eyes to see what is happening in the heavenly realm and to bring it down through what you create. So again, um, thank you for like really taking us to the next level, Amani. And Lori, uh, one of the questions that Lori asked was if people have different mediums in art, will they still get stuff out of the March 8th time? Absolutely. Like, again, once a month, we're going to be exploring stuff, but that's where the questions come in. We want to really, really help you grow. And so Amani is very well versed in many different types of, of mediums. And I am as well, as well as the other people that will be on. And There'll be people sharing from, oh gosh, abstract to portraiture, which is more of a Mani style. Um, but there's going to be a plethora of different things that we're going to explore and we're going to help you to grow. So that's a great question. Um, and, and right now, guys, like 
the the things that are the most exciting thing for us is like just don't do it alone if i could say one thing to every artist who has heard Amani today it's like her the process of what she's been on has been a journey where she is celebrated by so many different people in the art community at bethel so many different people that she built relationship at um you know at at, at ywam other places it's like the journey is one where, where we don't want you to have to do this alone. That's why we're doing the create forums uh, on at 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, because we feel it's time for artisans that want a kingdom experience with God to arise. And we want to take care of you and we want to hear your story. So we're so glad we're so glad that you are, are with us. Um, Amani, I would love for you to impart to pray right now so guys assume the position put it in <laughs> if you want more from amani i want you just to receive right now yeah god i just thank you for the open hearts that are here today and that are watching just thank you for releasing new levels of creativity and that any places where they've experienced fear of creating or fear of going after art specifically I ask that that would just be broken off and that they would have new eyes of vision to be able to see uh, what you want them to create and how they can touch other lives through their art just the lies that have come after them trying to hold them back God I just thank you for your truth that they're born for this and for such a time as this, that this is a really key season for artists to rise up and step out. So we just release that courage and freedom to everybody here today. Woo. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, guys, if you like this, share this with people. Um, and I loved all the words that you gave to and the things that were said. So we bless those words to produce life in you too. And guys we'll see you on march the 8th and again 6 to 7 p.m pacific standard time we want to help you to grow and again that will be posted also on my facebook live later and also on instagram so we just want to see you grow love you amani love you thank you see you soon bye love